Hello Game Junkies, Darius here with another Retro Refresh. Today, we are going to be modding this Game Boy Pocket with a new transparent shell and backlight, both from Retro Game Repair Shop. The backlight kit is the HHL backlight and biver kit, but today we are only going to be doing the backlight kit, so look forward to the biver mod coming in a future video. The Game Boy Pocket has always been my favorite way to play Game Boy games, so I look forward to seeing it in a new light. Let's get to it. For disassembly, prepare a Y01 tri-point screwdriver. There are six tri-point screws on the back side of the Game Boy Pocket. Two of these screws are in the battery compartment. Once you've taken out all six screws, you can simply lift off the back shell casing and place it to the side. Now, on to the main board. There are three Phillips point screws on the motherboard. Remove those screws. Then, go up to the top of the main board and depress the tabs on the sides of the ribbon cable using your fingers or a plastic spudger. While you're up there, remove the power slider as well. Now, we can remove the main board from the shell. The speaker will be hanging off the main board, so just be mindful of that when you remove the board. First, remove the button membranes and the buttons below. With the front shell free of components, let's remove the screen. To do this, I hold the shell sideways while gently twisting back and forth, allowing the screen to break free of the adhesive. If the screen is not already out, you can use a spudger on one of the corners to lift it up and out. Now place the screen down on something soft like a silicone pad or a microfiber cloth. There is a small square of adhesive holding the ribbon cable down to the screen assembly. Remove this first by gently pulling on the ribbon cable or very carefully using a craft knife to peel up one of the corners so you can grab it with your fingers and peel it off the rest of the way. You can remove that tape completely now. Let's remove the four orange spun pads on the back of the display to get them out of the way. You can use your craft knife or some tweezers to grab those sponge pads and simply pull them up and off. Onto the polarizer film. Be very careful during this step. When removing the back polarizer film, as the ribbon cables above are really fragile. Using a craft knife, you can gently slide it underneath one of the four corners. You want to expose the corner just enough to grab it with your fingers and pull it up and off. The adhesive is quite strong, so you have to use some force. Just be careful not to let your craft knife or your fingers slip. I used a craft knife on multiple corners because the first corner I did only peeled back the white film layer and not the polarizer film underneath. Once you get it off a bit, you can use a spudger to get in deeper and work the film off of that adhesive. After removing the adhesive film, there will be some leftover adhesive on the LCD screen below. Using a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol, Wipe down the back of the screen. Even afterwards, there may be a hazy layer of adhesive left, so you can use a microfiber cloth to polish it up, and while you're at it, polish up the front side of the screen as well.
Now grab your replacement polarizer film and hold it up to another LCD screen to determine the orientation to install it. Turning it 90 degrees, look for the orientation that lets the most light through and take note. Place the new polarizer film down in the orientation that lets the most light through. For the LED back panel, first remove the clear plastic film on the front side of the backlight. Slide it behind the polarizer film and underneath the ribbon cable. With everything together, I decided to place a piece of Kapton tape onto the ribbon cable to hold it down to the backlight panel, placing the tape in the same spot we had removed the tape from before. Now that we have the backlight screen assembled, let's place it to the side and move on to repairing the new replacement shell. After unpacking everything, place down the front half of the shell. We'll start there. This is a good time to clean the Game Boy Pocket's mainboard. Using isopropyl alcohol and a soft bristle brush like a toothbrush or a cotton swab, clean up any dirt or corrosion on the volume and contrast sliders. Then, clean up the metal button contacts as well as the power on and off slider. On this Game Boy Pocket, there was visible corrosion to the bottom of the board, near the battery terminals. I loosened it up with some isopropyl alcohol, then cleaned it up with cotton swabs. I did the same thing to the speaker, using the cotton swab in a circular motion to clean off debris. Now that the board is nice and clean, we can move on to the front half of the shell. First, we place down our backlight screen assembly into the shell. Install the screen with the ribbon cable towards the top of the shell and the black and red wires towards the bottom. Route those two wires through the middle of the shell outside of the two pins to avoid interfering with any of the membrane pads. Then you can reinstall the Game Boy's D-pad, A, B, and start and select buttons. And then install the membrane pans behind them. Grab the board and place it down onto the front shell casing. Be sure the display ribbon cable is outside of the board and that the backlight's cables are routed to the very bottom right corner of the shell. Now is a good time to place the power switch onto the on and off slider at the top of the shell. Before completely reinstalling the board, we are going to solder the cables from the backlight kit. I find the easiest to install one of the screws that came with the new shell to hold everything in place while we do work on the cables. First we want to solder the black or blue cable onto the contact point number 4 on the bottom right corner of the PCB. Once you've done that, you can solder the resistor included with the kit to the red cable. The resistor will decrease the overall brightness a bit, but increase the perceived contrast of the backlight. And protect the life of your backlight. The red lead and the resistor is then soldered to the second contact point up from the bottom right, the number one point. I then placed a piece of Kapton tape directly below the resistor and red wire to protect the circuits below. Now you can tuck the wires in as to not interfere with the back shell.
Plug the display ribbon cable into the board. Then press down the tabs on each side of the ribbon cable once installed. Now, install the two remaining screws through the board and fasten it down to the shell. We are now ready to put the back shell down and screw in the six tri-point screws. When using a new replacement shell, I find it best to use the screws that are included with the new shell. This is because the thread's pitch is different on the replacement screws. You can see the new screw's thread pitch is wider, which allows it to tap into the plastic of the new shell. Once you've installed all six screws, you are ready to put in some batteries, clip in the battery door, and insert a game cartridge to test the new screen. Let's boot it up and see how it looks. Adjusting the contrast slider on the right hand side, we can see that it's working pretty well. Now I'll remove the adhesive on the back of the new screen lens and install it into the shell. Applying pressure to all four sides when doing so. And finally, peeling the protective film off the front side of the screen lens. To really test this out, let's turn off the lights and see how it looks in the dark. The first thing I notice is a piece of dust behind the screen and in front of the polarizer film. I'll have to return to this later to remove that dust. Maybe using some compressed air would have prevented that. Also on the left hand side of the screen you can see some screen rot or screen decay. This has nothing to do with the backlight mod. It's somewhat common in older Game Boys that have been mistreated and I'm not aware of any way to repair it. If you know a way, mention so in the comments below. With that being said, the backlight screen, even without the Viver kit installed, is a night and day difference from the Game Boy Pocket's original screen. Being able to play some of my favorite Game Boy games in the dark is a magical experience I would have loved to have as a kid. At under $15 at the time of this mod, I can definitely say this is a worthy mod. I look forward to seeing what it looks like with higher contrast when the Biovert mod is installed. So please check back and look forward to that in a future video. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons for future videos. Also, comment with any insights you might have. I look forward to hearing from you. I'll see you all in the next video.